VAT is difficult. There are lots of little complexities and quirks that catch business owners out. And it can be costly. If HMRC finds errors in your returns, they can fine you. We check VAT returns on a daily basis. So what are the top 10 mistakes to avoid on your VAT returns? Well, here's our list. At its simplest, you can't prepare a VAT return without the proper records. You need your own sales invoices plus all your purchase invoices. Strictly speaking, you can't reclaim VAT without a valid purchase invoice. Therefore, keep them. This is where apps such as Receipt Bank can be really handy. You can take a photo as soon as you give the invoice and, hey presto, it's uploaded and logged in your accounting software. We also see lots of examples of businesses entering the wrong figures, net figures as gross and vice versa. So take care when you enter them. Basically, HMRC want the VAT as soon as possible. So any deposit or payments on account triggers a tax point. The tax point is the date you must account for VAT and include it in your return. A deposit triggers this tax point, even if you haven't actually raised the invoice yet. If you've had the cash, you need to declare the VAT. The only exception is on a returnable deposit if you hire out goods as part of your business. It's a simple rule, but one that's often ignored or just not known. You can't claim the VAT back on business entertainment, i.e. taking out clients or business contacts to restaurants, concerts, theatres, sporting events. It's actually one of my pet hates in corporate hospitality, advertisers costing X pounds plus VAT. It's misleading, you can't reclaim the VAT anyway. The exception is if you're taking out your own staff, you can reclaim VAT on these expenses. And that's another of those little quirks of VAT. It might sound obvious, but it's amazing how often we see VAT reclaimed twice on the same expense. It's usually because the businesses include the invoice and the supply statement or the request for payment within the VAT return. If you think the first few are complex, have a look at land and property. There are so many complexities to VAT and property transactions, it really is hard to keep up. But instead of recording a 24 hour video here for you, I'm going to keep it dead short. Ask an expert. The standard rate of VAT is 20% on your sales. However, some goods are zero rated, for example, newspapers or children's clothes. And some goods are exempt, for example, insurance. There may also be no VAT if you're selling to a customer abroad and certain conditions are met, or if you're selling to a charity. The flip side is we've seen businesses not include VAT when they should, for example, recharging expenses or selling an asset of the business, uh, computers or furniture. So it really pays to make sure you get the right rate of VAT on everything you do. The seventh mistake is not repaying VAT on unpaid invoices. Generally, the tax point that I mentioned earlier is the date of the invoice. Therefore, you can reclaim the VAT when you receive a purchase invoice, even if you haven't paid it yet. However, if the invoice is still unpaid after six months, you're actually required to repay that VAT to HMRC. Again, I could manage a separate videos with 10 mistakes just relating to travel. But the common errors include claiming about VAT on train tickets, airfares or bus fares, there's no VAT on these. Claiming VAT on petrol without applying the fuel scale charge. Not claiming VAT on business mileage claims. Claiming VAT back on car leases. You can only actually have half of that. Or claiming VAT back on the purchase of a vehicle. This is only allowable if there's no private use. Another mistake is not keeping petrol receipts when claiming VAT on business mileage. Even though you're not claiming the VAT on the petrol directly, you still need to keep the receipts. The ninth mistake is forgetting to submit an EC sales list. If you make sales to VAT registered businesses in the EC, you need to prepare and submit an EC sales list. And to add to the fun, these don't necessarily tie into the dates of your VAT returns because they're on a quarterly basis, but are fixed as March, June, September, December. Whatever quarter you use for your VAT return. So on that one, roll on Brexit. The last mistake is using the wrong VAT scheme. There are a few different schemes out there, the standard scheme, the flat rate scheme, the cash scheme, the margin scheme. Do you know which is the best scheme for you? 
and when did you last assess it? Rules change and your business changes, so it's worth checking every year you're on the most beneficial VAT scheme for you. All in all, it's a complex tax. If you're not sure, the best bet is to ask your accountant. It's also worth viewing your quarterly VAT return, though, as a chance to assess your business, not just a necessary evil for HMRC's benefit. A quarterly review can really help you see how the financial side of your business is stacking up. For example, struggling to pay your VAT bill is an indication that something's wrong with your business model. Are you profitable enough, or is cash flow the problem? By combining your VAT return with the management report from your accountant, you can turn the process into something really helpful to make your business better. So please get in touch if you'd like any help.